Uh, yes, uh, my name is uh, Joe Zephyrin, and um, it's interesting you raised the Gaza story because um, I was the news editor of the uh, website for the National Broadcaster in Ireland during the, the Gaza conflict, and one of the things we faced was our reporter physically couldn't get into Gaza to report what was going on, and it was because they were banned. Most reporters who weren't set up in there uh, were banned. So my question is, in terms of um, authoritative journalism as opposed to citizen journalism, which is which is what um, Peter does and, and BBC and the organization I used to work for does. How do we, um, A, ensure access for authoritative journalism, and how do we define who authoritative journalists and authoritative journalism outlets are going forward? Do we need a certification program? Do we need some, some practical, formal, uh, institution that is saying this is an authoritative news source, this is an uh, advocacy news source, this is a citizen news source. That's your point, and thank you for raising it. And, you know, when you say authoritative journalism, I mean, is CNN authoritative journalism, or BBC authoritative journalism, or, the, uh, or New, York, New York Times authoritative journalism? Sometimes we see reports that are completely misleading. And uh, again, but at the same time, we're not saying that uh, our uh, panacea completely in citizen journalism. Uh, we have to discuss this. Uh, uh, people just put pictures on their uh, mobiles and stuff and, and post it on the internet. I mean, sometimes a picture, you know, speaks for more than a thousand words. I mean, this is cliche, right? But there are people wrote on blogs, people wrote, you know, we have to have, uh, to discuss how we can have criteria for total quality management, total quality when it deals with citizen journalism. I mean, this uh, needs to be discussed. Uh, I, I agree with you. So, I'd, I'd like to, to share maybe two, two practical resources that, that might answer to this. And it'd be good to hear from each of us a practical website link or resource or organization that you know of that can help ensure this quality. There's one initiative that I know of that's been launched um, by Sir Tim Berners-Lee, the founder of the World Wide Web, uh, who have partnered with the Media Standards Trust, launching something called Transparency International. One of, the, one of the issues that we have is things get copied off the web and we don't know who the journalist is. One of, one of the things that this resource will do, it will show the, uh, the uh, news association, the agency, the ethical code that they are signed up to, to allow people like you and me to look at a news article, look about the author, look at when it was first edited, look at the code of conduct that they have signed up to and to be able to report. So this is one. Uh, there's another one which is a, a partnership between the United States Institute for Peace and uh, Georgetown University. And this is a peace media clearinghouse which has um, many fantastic resources of good practice and it's peacemedia.usip.org. And this is a, a clearinghouse that has everything from computer games in the field of non-violent conflict management and many other resources there. Can we please share from the floor some good practice examples for us to share? I, was, I, I agree absolutely that one of the keys to this is ownership. Um, one of the problems is that there's too much stuff which is floating around which is anonymous, which is unknown. And I know that presents some challenges, particularly in environments with, with oppressive regimes where the authors of some of this stuff are likely to be targeted, but ultimately someone has to take responsibility for the information. And the more you can tie the information to an individual, the more you can make someone own the stuff, make them responsible for the information and its consequences, then I think we're part of the way there. One of the difficulties is that journalism isn't like is a brain surgery. You don't really need any specific skill to be able to be journalists. You only need to be literate. Uh, which makes the whole the, the, the question of 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 qualification, a very difficult one. And as long as anyone who can read and write, anyone who can type can, can be a journalist, can call themselves a journalist. I, I don't think the, the, issue of, the issue of accreditation is a very difficult one. At what point do you draw the line between who is accredited and who is not, who is legitimate and who is not? I'm not arguing against citizen journalism. What I am arguing for is responsible ownership of, of the information. I think that is, is, a, is a key part of this. Um, there are three or four uh, websites that, I've, uh, uh, that, that are emerging. One of them has come up pretty much uh, as a direct result of UNESCO's own initiatives, uh, 
uh, several years ago uh, in terms of trying to raise the alternate uh, uh, the voice of the alternate media. Um, and uh, I, I read them in order to get an alternative perspective. And I, I, I'm sure a lot of you people uh, already have them, but for those who don't, uh, one of them is called IPS, Interpress Service, uh, which speaks very much, uh, which reports on international events like climate change and the World Trade Organization and other talks uh, from, an, uh, from an alternative perspective. Uh, one, another, uh, uh, another website that reports on, uh, on the developed countries from an alternative perspective is simply called that, Alternate, uh, A-L-T-E-R-N-E-T. -E -E if you just look it up, Google it, you'll probably get it. Alternate. Uh, and one that I particularly enjoy because a lot of uh, disgruntled correspondents from the New York Times and others have gone and joined this because they, they wanted to get away from establishment journalism uh, is called Truth Dig. Truth Dig. Uh, some really good stuff there. Uh, if people like Truth Dig, uh, Truth Dig, yeah. Uh, very, one word. Uh, yeah, Truth and Dig. D-I-G. D-I-G, yeah, Dig. Dig for Truth. <laughs> yeah, uh, and if you want to read an alternative perspective on the uh, on the Arab, on the Arab-Israeli conflict, uh, uh, there's a there's a group called Electronic Intifada. Electronic in, in, Intifada. Uh, I, again, I'm I'm a great believer in freedom of the press, but I also think it's important to get an alternative perspective. And some there are websites out there who are trying to, uh, and and this is good journalism. You can you can you can. Check it out for yourself, and this is not ragtag uh, propagandists uh, looking to uh, looking to bend your mind in any way. This is there's some good quality journalism out there. Yeah, um, I personally refer to IPS. I do look up the news over there, and uh, uh, I would um, uh, about uh, alternative. I mean, uh, this would be Global Voices. I do look up Global Voices. And uh, India specific news, I do look up uh, India Together and uh, Info Change India. Those are alternative uh, news uh, focusing on development oriented. Uh, I would also like to recommend uh, Tehelka um, as a, um, uh, it's a, it's good journalism. They, they really cover good. Tehelka. Uh, that's T H E L K A dot com. Thank you. And Sid? Well, yeah, I, uh, I will tell you an example of what we're doing at uh, our university. We are teaming with some uh, friend of ours, an American guy, with, with something called the Research Journalism Initiative. And uh, now I, we are opening something called NABLES Open Media Center. NABLES Open Media Center with an acronym N-O-N-C, and we, and we, we say no to media control. And uh, actually, the journalism students we are training, uh, the production that they do it, we're going to put it on a website with some credibility and accreditation uh, and the ownership of the material, so it's not like that. So this way, it's, uh, it's somewhat in between uh, citizen journalism from the grassroots, but at the same time, it's uh, professional uh, in order to be able to get out of the NAPSO Media Center. So this is just an example. Thank you.